Let's look at a little bit of electrical distribution history, starting with the successful operation of the electric light bulb, which is around 1880, and with the popularity gain of AC power, we saw a great deal of innovation in the electrical distribution industry. The AC motor, the traditional transformer design being patented, and then with the Chicago World's Fair, we saw AC power becoming dominant over DC and in the electrical distribution industry. What all this means is that there was a great deal of innovation, including the type of transformers that were specified. We're still using those today. Then, of course, these are dated around 100 plus years ago, but we're feeding radically different loads. Around 1970 to 1980, we started to see the transition of the types of loads connected to our power system from linear, which means the loads of the past that primarily consume AC power internally, these were light bulbs, three-phase motors, resistive heating elements, to the nonlinear loads of today that normally consume DC power internally. We see these as computers, fax machines, monitors, and they require a type of switch mode power supply to convert electricity from AC to DC. So what's inside of the electrical transformer? Basically, when I talk about HMTs, I'm really still going to be talking about transformer basics. We're going to still have a core. That core is going to help concentrate the, uh, the electrical magnetic flux. And we're going to have a coil, and that coil is going to allow for different turns for voltage transformation. It's the differences in the types of windings and how we do the windings that makes the HMT special. But again, remember that we're still using basic transformer mentality. So we still have the longevity and the life of the standard type of transformer because we're not incorporating power electronic components. Um, things like the capacitor, resistors, inductors, power electronics, those are not going inside. We're still talking about basic types of transformer construction. The loads themselves have changed. Looking at the loads of the past, the linear loads, and what that means by linear is that the current draw and voltage draw have a linear relationship with each other. The incandescent light bulb is a prime example. If you increase the voltage on the bulb, the bulb becomes brighter, current draw goes up, watt draw goes up. You decrease voltage, watt draw goes out, and current draw goes down, the bulb becomes dimmer. There's a linear relationship between these two. The graph to the right shows the current spectrum breakdown. What that means is it shows us the current in a frequency realm. So for example, when we look at this first current, we're only seeing the fundamental frequency, the number one, which and of course here in the US is 60 hertz. When we look at the nonlinear loads of today, we can see fairly quickly that they differ quite radically in how they consume power and the frequency spectrum that's drawn from them. Today's types of loads have a switch mode type power supply inside of them usually comprising of a, a capacitive type nature to help filter out the electricity at the end. And it's that capacitor that draws current in very tight pulses. Once it's drawn, it's maximum and it has the right voltage, it shuts off. And we can see that in the current draw itself. When we look at the frequency breakdown, a lot more is going on than just 60 hertz. Still, you can see that we still have the 60 hertz component, that blue line, but there's a lot of additional current. The next one over is the third harmonic. The next green line over is the fifth harmonic and seventh and so on and so on. If we size our electrical system to handle only the 60 hertz component, we're really in trouble. And this has instigated a lot of the changes that we have in today's types of systems where things are oversized or doubled. That effect comes from having to carry this additional amount of current. You can see, for example, the third harmonic, first green one over, is probably an additional 50 to 75% of the fundamental. And remember, these are RMS amps. So this is heating amperage. So a lot of additional current is flowing in today's power system that we need to carry in our switch gear. We need to carry and see how it interacts with the transformer and be sized properly from a wiring standpoint. To understand a little bit of how these higher order frequencies, these harmonics are interacting with our system, let's look at one of the types of losses that occurs in type, inside of a transformer. For example, the eddy current loss is one of many, hysteresis losses, I squared R losses. The overall sum of these losses comprise the, the energy efficiency or the performance of the transformer itself. Let's see how harmonics impacts the eddy current loss. If you look at the formula, we see that eddy current loss is dependent upon the volume of material you're trying to push the energy through, pi squared. And then we come to the next component, frequency squared. In the past, we just looked at 60 hertz squared and moved on with life. But today, because of all these additional harmonics, third harmonic is actually three times the fundamental frequency. So third harmonic is 180 hertz. That's 180 hertz squared. Fifth harmonic is five times the fundamental, 300 hertz. That means 300 hertz squared. 
there's a dramatic exponential impact on losses due to the harmonics in today's types of electrical systems. To really understand and go after harmonics, we need to understand the families and how these different harmonics move throughout a power system. Families of harmonics have a tendency to group together, and that's what we will be investigating today. The first family we want to look at is typically known as the triplet harmonics. These occur because of our, the nature of our three-phase power system. All of the multiples of three have a tendency to, to gang together and to move together. So this represents the third harmonic, ninth harmonic, fifteenth harmonic. In treatment of these, we're going to create a different secondary on the HMT transformer. Another family of harmonics we want to look at is called the fifth and seventh. They just happen to flow together and how they move throughout a power system. To treat this, we're going to use a technique called phase shifting in our electrical system and in our design to mitigate and get rid of these harmonics. And you can see where I'm going here. If we were able to deal with the triplet harmonics and the fifth and seventh, getting rid of the third, the fifth, the ninth, the fifteenth, and so on and so on, we've had a dramatic reduction in the amount of additional currents and the amount of additional distortion that's on our system. Again, only leaving that fundamental nice clean 60 hertz power. Who's ready to do some vector mathematics? Don't get nervous. We're able to show and contrast how the standard delta y transformer performs against the HMT, and vector mathematics and the, and the vector representation of that makes it a very easy way to understand what's going on inside of the transformer, what's going on in our power system. Say, for example, we have a three-phase power system, phase A, phase B, and phase C, and they're all drawing current. You can see that the black line represents the amount of 60 hertz current. If you look at the legend in the upper left corner, the black line represents the 60 hertz current. The red line represents the third and the fifth and so on and so on. So if we see phase A and phase B and phase C in this example, this has the fundamental textbook example of how current's supposed to move. What's interesting to note, of course, is the third harmonic, the triplet harmonics. The third harmonic has a tendency to be in phase in each of the phases. Third harmonic from A is in phase with third harmonic in B, which is phase with third harmonic in C. What this means, of course, is that the role and the nature of the neutral has changed. In the past, the neutral only carried the 60 hertz imbalance between the phases. And again, if you look real close, you'll see that we do have a little black mark. That's the 60 hertz imbalance between the three phases, very small in this case. But what I mean by the change in the role, you can see quite dramatically that the neutral has to carry a great deal of additional current. This is the third harmonic current that's returning, and it's the addition of the individual phases. So the triplet harmonic from A, the triplet harmonic from B, the triplet harmonic from C are all additive, and they return in the neutral path. If you look closely, you'll see that the neutral is not the predominant path for movement of fifth and seventh harmonics. Fifth and seventh harmonics will travel in their individual phases, but really not return on the neutral. 